Do you need to borrow my key card again? I think so. <clears throat> Gotta check again. Where did I go? Damn. I'm just trying to be helpful. Very important. Yeah, my, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I John, because they, they, they went to you. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Same thing. Same thing. That's a lot more important. Just trying to get up the same thing. Same thing. It's a good thing. And then you can prove it. You can have a Twit card, too, and stuff. Or whatever. Is that a lot of deep thing? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing, yeah. But we put it all together. We're not as important near as that. And then I went in and tried to get my voice down. Knock on wood. Explaining to do you. All righty. So we'll bring the uh, finance committee to order, and we have all of the council members here in attendance uh, listed. And any uh, minutes that need to be approved? Do we need any changes on those? I did not see any. Right. Neither did I. Thank you. We'll move along to the department reports and presentations and a personal update from Brian Sandler. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Let's see. The update was in your packet. Uh, we have uh, the custodian starting on June 3rd, uh, a lateral police officer starting on June 16th. I think those are the two that are added on since the last uh, meeting. Uh, as well as a number of uh, seasonal staff. I think we have about nine, perhaps uh, starting uh, or recently started or starting today. So getting geared up for the, for the summer. Are there any questions? Mm -mm. Brian? Nope. All right. Questions, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Excellent. Moving along to our discussion and action items, uh, we have resolution 2438, which is authorizing the mayor for surplus of variety of vehicles, equipment, and IT items. This is very procedural kind of stuff. We do this all the time. It's just required by state law that they like fly this in front of us. Mm -hmm. It's like, yay. We never generally do anything with it um, unless you guys have a particular item that you're like, wait, why are we selling that vehicle or that like computer system or something or whatever it is. No. She gets to look at that. It's very like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I read through so all that. Old stuff that just, you know, I get it. You got to get rid of it. You uh, Nick, place to look right? at that boat trailer, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. Planet Gov. Huh? Planet.gov. Is that what like it is? Planet.gov. Is that where the yeah, option the, is? That's, yes. The, the vehicles and equipment will go there. All the IT, old computers and stuff will go to GSA. Well, make an appointment for that stuff and then then we take it down there and it gets sold Dot up. and then the gsa the that's the computers the vehicles the boat trailer will be the planet they'll come take pictures once we do that we make an appointment with them they'll come they do all the work after that they okay. take all the pictures and put it on they their put site it up for auction mm -hmm. okay yes. it's a gov planet dot com oh is that it through richie brothers yeah they're okay. partnered up over the years g o b planet <laughs> yep yep dot, dot, com. dot com dot com yeah you just type in gut planet it shows up yeah cool awesome hey sent or oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. for sure <laughs> i'll have you sign these oh, for the meeting okay very good thank you it's a lot <laughs> yeah they don't do it every now and then kind of thing. Um, let's see. Going back to the next item would be the Allen York Park Security Power. Please come down. I, I will. I'm yeah. Lance Johnson. Nice to meet you all. Uh, so we purchased uh, cameras for security at uh, the new ball field five at the end of 2023 with some money that we had uh, extra. Uh, what we didn't realize at the time and our electrician being gone was that uh, there was 480 power to the light poles and we need 120 volt power. So we're gonna to have to run new wiring to where the cameras are installed to get power to the security cameras. 
Because you're generally using a lot of the light bulbs for the security camera mounting or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And they're already they've already been installed, correct? Yes. The cameras are up and installed. We're just waiting on this. And they've been tested as well. They do work. And they're like, how do you plug these things in? We're like, oh. <laughs> uh, so you, did simple. you test them before they went up then? They been, they were tested before the installation, but also with a battery pack uh, okay. when they were installed. That way they can do all the aiming and all that kind of crap. Yes. And like, Okay, hook them up. They're probably Wi-Fi, something or other. Yeah. You know, the way I look at this, this is like security. Yeah. So, I mean, safety, security is part of, you know, what we need to do to keep our citizens safe out of the park. So, I I don't see this as an option. <laughs> um, and it's something that needs to be done. We have, we've purchased the cameras and it's kind of a waste not to use them. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> um, do we, let's see. Oh, okay. So we still have so, yeah. some of the money left over. Yeah, so we'll, okay. what we're proposing to make sure we don't exceed our budget expenditures is we had we had budgeted $525,000 to do um, parking, lot parking, lot, parking lot design. And we know that now if we move forward, that's only 400,000. So there's about 125,000 left in that budgeted line item. We're requesting to use thirteen hundred of it. Thirteen thousand. Uh, thirteen thousand. Sorry. Thank you, <laughs> Councilmember Uh Thirteen thousand, and it is a C park C. It's part of the park CIP for that project um, that just wasn't originally initially budgeted for, so it came out of the park CIP budget. Is okay. there any way that could possibly come in under budget under that thirteen thousand, or is that? No, that's the. I believe that's the exact quote we got that's from the, the 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 contract that's attached. Okay. And it, it is okay for us to take money from what we've budgeted for the ball field for to use for that? Reallocate it? Yeah. Yeah, we re, we're re reallocating it within the park CIP. Um, this, this installing the cameras was part of the scope for ball field number five, Sherry. Uh, at the time, though, we didn't realize that we were going to have to pull the electrical line. Um, so we're just finishing out basically ball field five, which was a park CIP project. And that 525 is part of the park CIP. Okay. Unless I'm explaining that wrong, Sherry. Always defer to this CFO. Okay. <laughs> we got a yes from is the CFO. Ball for, is that ball field four or ball field five? Uh, ball, field five. ball field five. We're pulling the money from the ball field four conversion okay. project. Okay. Yeah, anything that we can do to discourage vandalism down there in that area is greatly appreciated, of course. There's this tremendous, you know, investment in that field and it, it's not going to take a lot we're probably going to you know uh, yeah i remember sorry. a couple winters ago somebody out there on their four wheelers out right? in <laughs> allen york park yes exactly all those yeah. pictures out on the line everybody's like who was this and then guess what they were caught because the camera sold it and i will say there's a yeah. number of people on my staff to include myself that currently check the cameras at allen york park so oh, we would definitely be checking those cameras oh, yes. yeah you know it's a hit and miss thing but you know it's just one of those tools that hopefully helps who us. has access to all the cameras over there at allen york and this if we put the i do chuck does and then there's todd and pd detectives. and all the pds and the detectives over there and kramer as well and, oh yeah and kramer okay so there's lots of eyes on it. Yay, I like it a lot. What's the, is there any recording time on those, Chuck? Or? Oh yeah, it's got a, a DVR that they only record activity, yeah, so it, yeah. it, they can go back a decent amount of time. Sure, a week or whatever. Something. Yeah, about yeah. a week. Maybe a couple, yeah, that'd be good. Yay. Okay, and then after that, the recordings are deleted or? Yeah. Okay. From the open thing. Okay. Drops off the end of the disc. Can, can you the, pull, uh, like, specific time frame so like if you see a crime happen um can you pull that crime yep. and save it so that yep. it doesn't get lost yep. okay um i'm okay with this moving forward i think it needs to go on full council though because you're in your full council thing that's good uh, <laughs> yeah so i good. i know um on the full on the committee issues yeah finance uh full count yeah. finance issue kind of thing yeah. Excellent. Sure. Gwen, you okay with that? Yep. All righty. Sounds good to me, too. So we'll move that one forward. Thanks for bringing that up and getting those in.
Let's see. I can have to scroll up to the top here. Uh, tire mounting machine and tire balancer motion. Just a motion? Hmm. Yeah, it's just an authorized. Well, we're asking to move money around, so we want to. We needed a motion to move money around. There's not a contract to sign. Oh, okay. So moved. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, if you want to just do it that quick, I'm good. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say if we don't need to talk, we don't need to talk. Uh, right now, we for the tires, we for the police vehicles, uh, we buy specific tires. State contract is for Goodyear tires. They're located down in Fife, so the mechanics usually, as we need tires, run down to Fife, buy the tires, and bring them back. If it's a police vehicle, then we schedule with the police. And then we have a local supplier. Uh, the cost of that is to now we're paying on close to two hundred dollars to have a set of tires. I think they pulled it was one hundred and seventy dollars for two tires to get mounted and balanced. So we're looking to to do that in house now because uh, of the nice shop that we have and the mechanics. We're trying to do more and more. We're doing the police service of the vehicles there now, the brake jobs, changes, and all that. So we're trying to add that. Uh, this would also limit the officers downtime at the shop. We have pool vehicles now. So when they show up, they can drop off their vehicle, just transport their firearm and computer into another vehicle, be right back out on the street. They don't have to wait at the tire shop and, and do for any of that. Uh, this one they was the and this would also so would strictly return to duty, enhance. So the safety and reduce costs, tires, maintenance, capabilities during emergencies with local shops or closed would be also advantageous to allow better city response. So all the vehicles, if there's a tire during an emergency, we could just fix it there and move mm -hmm. on. Uh, my question would be, um, is our current mechanic staff going to be able to handle this in addition to all their other they say they're, they're duties they're, they're and not need another person here in the near future. It actually would save them time because if okay. you think about it right now, if we need to drive, get tire changed, they have to get in the truck, drive to Fife, okay. pick up the tires, drive the tires to discount tire, drive back to the shop. Okay. So all of that time that they're in transit is time that they're losing. Okay. So with this, what we would do and what Keith and I've talked about is they would order eight sets of tires. We'd have them in the shop, so when a vehicle has to come in, they're just grabbing them off the shelf and mounting and balancing their tires versus having to do that big circuit of driving around to pick up equipment. And okay. we've had some instances of the shop will bring the tires there and the officer can't get there or our vehicle mm -hmm. won't get there for a few days. And then all of a sudden we get a call from the from from this employee officer or ever like they don't have the tires. Yeah. Well, they put them in the back room and then that person that put them in the back room's day off, and now we don't we don't know where our tires are. So they usually wind up finding them. Mm -hmm. You know, we really haven't we've not lost the set or anything, but this would be a better if we could. The more control you have over it, it would be better for mm -hmm. the citizens and us. Five and, energy now. And then also during emergencies, say a, fire, a power outage, earthquake any sort of emergency where the local tire shop goes down, if we lose a snow plow or a police vehicle or any of our equipment, we wouldn't be, we, that equipment would be out of service because we wouldn't have the ability to change the tire because okay. we don't have the local shop to do that work. Um, so this is for emergency management or, you know, I, Chief and I were talking earlier, if a vehicle's involved in a police pursuit, we have the, the tire stocked, they bring the vehicle in, take the loaner vehicle, we switch out the tires on the police vehicle that was in pursuit that had the damaged tire and put the tire, put the vehicle back in service without having to do that big circuit of go, going out and buying the tires and doing the whole drive around process. That being said, in case of an emergency, we have massive generator out there yeah. that if, yeah. if we lost power, then we'd still be able to right. do the work that we need to do because we have that generator. Yeah, we have, we have a generator that yeah. will run our entire operation uh, with a 4,000 gallon tank. We figured it'd run us for five days before we need to be refueled. I think it was a big bad. At least full well, sure. It lasts a lot longer than yeah. that, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. I think Chief Rich is here. Yeah, a real good recent example is a summer grave fire. Right, power yeah. was out yeah. because yeah. of that. Yeah. Police officers are driving through debris, yeah. having tires go down. 
we would have the ability to come back to our shop with our generator, get the emergency vehicle up and running, whether it's police, fire, mm -hmm. uh, public works, it would really help the continuity of operations. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Sherry, is, are we just um, moving, reallocating some funds, or is this already? Um, we're no, we're prepared. Like to be Jason to use, yeah, Jason wanted to use uh, some funds from the Public Services Center build uh, that were available, as well as some funds from ER and R. Okay. It just wasn't budgeted. Sure. What's yeah. so ER and R? Uh, equipment rental and replacement. Okay. And we're okay doing that, not hurting that budget. Okay. It'd be fine. I think this should go on, you know, um, finance council issues again mm -hmm. and Great. give it a vote from the council. But I think it's this good. This is a new theme. I know. I know. But you know what? That's great. I love, I love it. I love making yeah. sure everybody knows what we're doing. We're going to, even if we're reallocating, I feel like letting people know what we're spending money on mm -hmm. yeah. is super important. Yep. I agree. Let's see here. Okay. So we're in, that's where it's going. When the committee approves on that. We'll sign in a moment or two and we'll move along to resolution 2450, the modular flooring. Yay. Yeah, that's back to me. So um, after 16 years of heavy use, that carpet is just wore out. It's mm -hmm. the seams are splitting up, you know. Uh, we'd like to move the historical site site in there at some point, hopefully, um, so we can get them out of that old city hall building and then get that tore down at some point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. did, did Gwen, were you able to review that by chance or did you see it? The carpet over there in the module. I did not go over and look at it. I, I had talked to Jason. It's really gross. It. Yeah, it's really gross. <laughs> Half the ceiling tiles is like the falling down. <laughs> I, I take Jason's word for it. That the... Oh, sure. yeah. yeah, the carpet over there got pretty beat up. It's, it was the crew space for the crew. And so they came in in their work boots and. And I think there was a few other repairs that need to be made as well. Yeah. Is that ceiling tile included and all of that? No, this is just the floor. And I think this, the other stuff I think we can probably handle. This was just mainly get the, getting the flooring yeah. switched out. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're wanting to take money from the building duct cleaning budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, from the new public works or public safety building? No, the, or, the public safety oh, building. the police or station. The police station. Oh. The, all the names, there's <laughs> public work, public safety. What is the actual name of this building? Justice, Justice Center. Center, okay. And municipal. And municipal, okay. JMC. And we're the PSD post. The, or no, what PSD. The PSD. PSD. PSC, Public Service Center. Because there's already a PSB. <laughs> public safety building. <laughs> I don't come up with this. I just roll. I just roll. <laughs> Or public, safety building. Public, there's the public safety building, building. which is where the police is at, yeah. and the public service center, which is center. where the center. City clerks are working on a list of uh, an acronyms <laughs> to give to everyone, so hopefully all these different. So, yeah. And not so new council members. <laughs> right. oh, staff, I, can't get, I get it wrong half the time I work over there. Uh, okay. Um, I... You know me. Needs to be done. Needs mm -hmm. to be done, but just move it over so that <laughs> full council has a, a say in it. <laughs> okay, now no complaining that the meetings are like three hours long. Um, Could I come on this one though, Jason? Yeah. A, go ahead. Yeah. Are you not doing the, are they not doing the duck cleaning? No, we've been talking and with the plans to, to hopefully do some work over the building next year, we'll do the duck cleaning next year with the work that we're hopefully going to be doing re to rehab that building as we do part of that <laughs> transition transition because we know we're going to have to do work as part of that so the thought of cleaning the ducks and doing new and construction activity <laughs> right and having to re-clean the ducks yeah. would just be kind right. of throwing some money away so Thank and you. and i don't yeah i don't suspect you know that the what the historical society had a bunch of money uh, of course right a lot of times, and, you know, we would, of course, and I wouldn't suggest that, but, you know, if the tenant was to move into a building, it'd be kind of like you'd have the choice of whether the owner was going to do the improvements or whether they were going to say, hey, you know, it's up to you kind of thing. So 
I suspect they were like, uh, we don't really have like the money to do that with, or they didn't want to do it, or yeah, they don't have a lot of money to do anything. Yeah. Um, but they did offer to like paint okay. side, so they're going to do some stuff. But the floor yeah. was something that had to be done because it was like trip hazards and that kind of stuff. Too much of a heavy lift for yeah. that price kind of thing. Yeah, it makes sense, huh? Are Super they going to fix the ceiling tiles themselves? I've already talked about the ceiling tiles. Oh, I think just. They think we they have other buildings there that are going to be torn down that we can take ceiling tiles out and install there. Oh, okay. So it's not going to cost anybody anything. Okay. okay. Smooth things around. I yes. like it. Yeah. Purpose reuse. Yay. Nice. So I'm here and we'll move this one forward with a recommendation to the uh, yeah, finance. Gotcha. Good. Let's see here. Moving along to the senior center improvement one. Who's doing that one? So we're continuing on our theme tonight of get rid of it, watch <laughs> it, or uh, fix it up. And this is on the theme. So a uh, big thank you, though, before I get started uh, to Sue for showing up and helping me present tonight as the manager of the Senior Center. Yeah. She's been doing it since 1990. She let me know tonight. No, so. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Senior Center has been there since 1990. I've been there since 04. She's, she's been off she's new. Good service she's there. We can sit tonight. So a long time, 25 plus years. So other thank you uh, good looks uh, down at the opposite end of the table to Leslie Harris. In your packet is the grant uh, that she was able to secure uh, to support these improvements, the uh, senior center. So a big thank you to her. Uh, the improvements are described in your agenda briefing, uh, but I'll just read them out real quick to you. It's HVAC, it's windows, it's roof repairs, it's sound area, sound dampening, uh, painting on the inside and the outside, replacement of the windows, um, and a new freezer. So along with wooden decking and dining tables. So what the scope is in front of you today is to us to hire some uh, architectural consultants. They're listed in your uh, also packet, mechanical, electrical, those kind of folks that have that expertise um, that can specify what the solution is over there and create a, help us create a bid package so we can go out and get a public bid. So that's all I had to present tonight. Um, do you guys have any questions? How much is the the scope going to the having it says like RH2 has prepared the attached scope fee that includes work. So is that our even paid for? So we already know that amount or is that what you're wanting to spend the money on? So the scope is for just around $93,000. Okay. And how we're paying for it is uh, we're stealing the duck cleaning money again, <laughs> along with some painting money that we had set aside. Okay. So, but looking ahead, uh, also in your packet okay. you is this document that looks like this. If you look into the fine details of this, um, engineering is a reversible cost, but it's uh, reimbursable. So you got to spend it to get it. That's get right. It. That's yep. right. I remember that. Okay. Um, so their scope to keep going on. It has kind of two points. It's kind of set up like the boat trailer parking. Oh, Jason, is it? They write together some specifications. Mm -hmm. They put a cost estimate together and what it's going to cost. Then maybe we have another check-in to make sure that we got enough budget for it in our grant. Um, and then we move forward to bidding. So that, that's kind of where that's set up. Okay. And the, the it says we're getting uh, 650000 now. So with that grant? It's a little mm -hmm. less than that, yeah. So okay. the amount requested was six fifty, but then they take a cut from the state has an administrative fee, so they'll be a little bit taken off. Of course they do. So I think it's like <laughs> six hundred and thirty thousand somewhere on there. Now, are there any uh, stipulations on taking this money? There are strings. Okay, what are the strings? The strings are that you need to go through a uh, process where you reach out to the tribes and you reach out the Department of Historic Preservation to make sure that the senior center. There's nothing in it that's historic. So and you've got to consult okay. with the tribes to make sure that there's nothing of historical significance there. Okay. Um, you've got to uh, comply with Davis-Bacon law, which means you, if you're working on the site, I got to interview and make sure that you're making the wage that you're, uh, that you're supposed to be making. Okay. Uh, there are other strings that are involved with uh, typical state funds. You have to go through a public bid process. You have to open your bids publicly and read them aloud. Um, you have to award it. Um, uh, to a contractor that hasn't been debarred uh, and gives you a responsible bid. That's not one that's made up and the math doesn't work. That's one that the math all adds up and it's the lowest bid from the other three that you got. Okay. So, but a lot of those strings are spelled out 
in the okay. in here. So yeah, I, one of them is like the project. We have to remain the ownership for at least ten years, so of the site as well. So, okay. Ooh. Which it's our building, so and it could remain there. It could if you decide like if you got the line, it could become if we build a new, a bit new building. Scene. Yeah. And, and keep that building. We just gotta keep the building for two. Okay. Uh, okay. We can repurpose was, it. Yep. What happened? To, like, if all of a sudden, miraculously, we were able to build sure. a brand new, beautiful community center that had a senior center attached to it, yeah. um, <laughs> with an industrial kitchen, et cetera, like right here where that pine tree is. Uh, then we would just have to keep that thing alive for mm -hmm. the ten years. To the ten years. Okay. Ten years. Mm -hmm. Okay. What, regardless of what we use it for. Okay. Be a, a playtime area for toddlers. Yeah, you can, you can repurpose. You can, you can yeah. rent it, it out for events. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Okay. Yeah. Is Make that, some money. Is that actual the seismic stuff required in that scenario? You or is that part of the video? Okay. So, the, 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 in our Arch2 scope and also in our grant, there's $200,000 set aside for seismic upgrades. Okay. That's the bottom. Oh. And we've reached out to uh, our building department. And also a structural engineer that is with this architectural firm, and uh, we don't need to do that uh, for this. Uh, and the reason is because no one's sleeping there, no one's staying the night there. So in case we want to start housing people there, um, that's when that would be kick in. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Ninety-three. So what we need to do is get like we have to get this bid package done and then that way we can find out determine the true costs and then we'll have to work with the state again on um, our con a contract. Mm -hmm. So if like the project's going to exceed the 630,000 then we'll say okay are we going to trim back the project description the projects we do or do we look for money do we ask for money elsewhere and money elsewhere. So that will be at that point. So we they is, they is the this. Yeah, exactly. Is so the ninety-three thousand coming out of the grant, or is that that was something that we reallocated? It's reimbursable. What you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, and it, it, it can be. Okay. It can be. If you look okay. and dig into this, one so, of the reimbursable costs is engineering. So, so we take it out. We can put. It, they'll put it back in for us, and then we can use the full six hundred and thirty yeah. for um, renovations. The remaining your balance. Okay. We can, but the only issue where we do that is the example that Leslie talked about yeah. is that if we come and we do the costs and we actually need more the grants and then yeah. again, we'd it. be coming back to you guys and saying, hey, this is why we need these additional funds. We're not going to ask for the engineering back. We need to spend it on the project. Okay, because I see or did I just see that at? Uh, yeah, I was going to say it would be the six, Ken, am I correct? Yeah. It'd be the 630 less the cost that we spend on the engineering. This is what they're proposing, the 90. And, 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 and less, Sherry, the, the cost of doing the project then, exceeds that. Yeah, then we would, right. uh, you, right. we would propose to not seek reimbursement for the right. money that was on the floor. But either way, I guess my point is it's not going above 630. You're not getting oh. 630 plus engineering. So right. Oh, no. Okay. 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 So it would be reimbursed back to the city from where we took it out of the duct work and stuff from the grant. Only if it does as as an thirty. There's a cap. Yeah. You're not getting part of this thirty is okay. a requirement that a small match to the city, which is why the city proposed that we use our what we had already allocated for the senior center painting as okay. our portion of matching this yeah. project. So now that that money is shifting from um actually paying for painting, but paying for part of this engineering, we're still having our match. Right. Okay. So we're still fulfilling that requirement of this money. Okay. How much do we have to, what's our match amount total? I think that I think was- About 10%, which would be about 60,000, which is conveniently what the painting was going to be. In. Okay. And then the 33 from the duct cleaning. So the, the duct cleaning budget will be basically gone. Yeah. Once these yeah. two projects are done, okay. We've been doing lots of, based on council priorities, reprogramming to try I, to get things accomplished. You're going. I do. I like where you're going. This is the full council kind of finance. Yeah, right? you know, I thought this was a going consent agenda. Totally, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <last> not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
So the other thing I promised, I promised through the floor. Talk about the community. Are you good? If they don't have any questions, <laughs> yeah. we know they know. We know it. Yeah. No, that, that, that's that's never it. been yes. a question. I mean, you know, we talked about it years ago of like, how do we get this done? And it, it's been needed for a long time. So I'm glad that staff been able to kind of help me figure this out. And like, how can we fund this? And getting a grant, that's amazing. Leslie, great job on being able to secure that. And Everybody in this room has been in the building and yes. yeah. mm -hmm. how well used it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And having a, you know, AC and, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. That would be amazing. Our Working your so you need to be comfortable. <laughs> like hot and cold things. <laughs> the insulation would be good. <laughs> Hopefully elevator. So they put the in there. <laughs> They can come in from the outside. You know, there's yeah. it's got that ramp across. Yeah. But if it's but icy, that's not that's necessarily true. the best. That's true. And it's not really good stance. So you're going to walk or a wheelchair. <laughs> So that's our regular items for this evening. We go to open committee discussion items if we have anything. I do actually. So um, we've been discussing the Parks and Rec Recreation Program for quite some time, and we've had um, the director here. And so there, and the ILA has been signed now with this uh, with the city or with the school district. Um, so I have this program guidelines and I was thinking we should open this up for bid with the recreation program as well as some of the organizations that have been interested in taking over or taking pork partial over the, um, the recreation program. Mm -hmm. So I was just thinking we can um, open it up for like a bid process. We have a budget. Um, so we'll say, you know, based off of assume that your budget is 200,000 in addition to the profit below from the program fees you anticipate. There are four seasons, winter, spring, summer and fall. The committee will need to know your profit for each program in each season, what money you bring in for the profit you create for the product you create your loss, how much it costs to pay south salaries, employees, rental, and equipment, and uh, how will you achieve to a balanced budget? So this is just like a kind of proposal um, idea for any um, like kind of a procedure. So um, below is a list of guidelines. The Bonnie Lake City Council Finance Committee will consider when deciding where to place trust in who will manage the sports and recreation of our city's program and budget. Um, then we have the curriculum. Do you have any um, sports specific curriculum and when was it created? Um, partnerships. So uh, what partnerships have you identified, met with or focused on? When were those partnerships started? What do you anticipate they will deliver? Um, what is the basis for your agreement, verbal or written? And then do you have a vision for our sports and recreation program for the city and the region? Do you have a mission for the um, specific for the sports and for the city and for the region? And then delivery. Uh, what steps do you plan to take to accomplish the vision mission? And what uh, and when can it be completed? Are there phases? Um, what are the graphics? And then they can present this to the finance committee on um, June 7th, they'll have 10 days. They have to turn in um, the, the, this to the, um, the city clerk. So this would be given to David, to Wells, to send out to any organizations like MRAC or I-9 or anybody else who's approached the recreation program, as well as um, David, from the recreation department would also be um, need to provide a competitive presentation to describe the above and what the budget is and, and how they plan to keep their budget. So this was just um, kind of thoughts on how we could kind of keep this moving forward. Now that we have an ILA, I don't want to go stagnant and not keep on focus with budgets and um, not proceed forward 
um, moving forward with the program to make sure that we're we're thinking progressively and becoming profitable. Also, um, I think that this would be excellent for us to be able to give to MRAC, I-9, any organizations that um, are interested, as well as um, then our recreation program would be expected to um, give us a presentation as well. So there's dates, timelines. And I, originally I had said um, that finance committee recommendations will be presented to the full council for consideration of a vote following Tuesday, June um, 18th, but I realized we're gonna be gone and that's a workshop. So um, I, I changed it to um, June 25th because we'll be back in session at that time. And I can I can email this to anybody or um, has kind of thoughts and has I nine said they're interested? In I know it was just something real, I remembered that. Sorry, um, real quick. Uh, oh, John, oh, yeah. I just saw David walk by. If you want to tell him, I tried to call him. Yeah, he's he's here. Here. Here he comes. Right okay, I just tried yeah. to call him. Okay, thank you. Um. So I know we. I think we were talking about is I nine is kind of a competition for us, and I think that's kind of part of our problem is we're like. Between MRFC, because MRAC is not operational in that way yet, um, but MRFC for soccer, I-9 for multi-sports in our area, uh, there's the Little League, and then there's a lacrosse league. And there's something else. There's only one on, on, right? I don't know who is yeah. watching. Bro. There's a bunch I of different. I remember um, uh, Deputy yeah. Mayor Swap yeah. mentioning yeah. I-9. Yeah. So that's why I was just, yeah. it, it's not in here, but I, I just think that this should be presented to any organization that is wanting to consider being part of our program. So then they need to give us a reason why they need to tell us how they what their plans are to stay in budget. Do they have a curriculum? Do they have partners that they can bring in? Uh, you know, this is this is a competitive business, and we need to mm -hmm. kind of stay on top of everything. But I I just feel like um, you know we have so many people that are wanting to meet with our recreation program director and or you know be interested. So anybody who's been interested in the program within the last two years should be presented with these guidelines and they can present um, as well as um, the recreation department should be giving us a competitive presentation as well. So I don't so know, I just. I have a couple of thoughts. I know that you guys probably have thoughts, but I have uh, financial thoughts. Um, if this is something that you're wanting to farm out part of to another entity, they don't really have 200,000 because David has to operate his budget with that money as well. So that was for the whole recreation budget and it was 148,000 that council passed. So over and above. Um, so he has people we have to pay for. So if you said, Hey, um, MRIC, they put in a great bid and you're going to give them $148,000 plus they get to use whatever money. That's not really the case because I've got David's salaries, I've got Alex's salaries. It, it, does, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the uh, so what well, is your basic concept for a full outsource or what is that like? Um, I mean, just like to contract all of the functions of the parks and rec that we currently do to somebody else. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's part of the, the presentation. You know, what what are your myth? What are your what's your mission? What's your goals? What's your vision? You know, because if we can't. Um, I just want to stay competitive. I just want to stay on top and be, you know, continuously moving forward rather than go stagnant. You know, now that we have the ILA signed, I don't want to just go back and go, OK, we need some more money put into the budget or whatever. I just want this to. Um, you know, if, if there are companies that can actually take over the whole entire program, then, you know, they need to present whether they can do it or not. If it's just a partial, I mean, this, this, this is just like a sure, yeah. kind of a thought process. So, I mean, it can be changed. I have, I've got the, um, I just put it on a word document. So, um, it, you know, the budget can be changed. The, I, I would assume that if they were to take over the whole entire program, which mm -hmm. um, then they would have to come up with their own budget, right? 
So, yeah, that would be my thought is like if we're, I mean, if so, like I know when we met with MRAC and MRFC is they want the sports side, but they only want certain because a lot of what we do isn't actual like, you know, we have the the peewee soccer and stuff like that, but a lot of it is the high school stuff. So like our our high school cheer team, our high school football does their camp, our uh, high school drill team does a camp. So a lot of that has nothing to do with like MRAC. They're just things that we are kind of their almost their pass through because it keeps it out of ASB. Because if they do it through ASB, they can't do a lot of these things. So that's why it comes through us. And then they have the ability to still do those because it's part of the recreation program mm -hmm. rather than ASB. Um, now, why can't the ASB run their own program? ASB has got so many or the, stipulations. Uh, the other one, the boosters. Boosters. Um, boosters, it depends. I don't know why boosters hasn't stepped in. Honestly, I think it's because then parents have to run it. Because so actually, I guess I, that would I would be able to say is in the boosters club, if it is run through boosters, it has to be, I think it's 70 or 80 percent parent run rather than student run. So when these are put out, it's the coach and the kids that put these uh, things together and they do all of it. So there's no parent involvement unless they need volunteers. Um, so then it would put it back onto the parent's shoulders to have to put these camps together. And then they would have to be teaching the kids, not the kids couldn't, like the students couldn't teach the, the younger generation. Um, so I think that's why we run it through recreation. But then if we... If we farm out the whole thing, then we just give it all to somebody and we say we're done. We don't have a rec program. So then we have staff that we would either let go or move them into different And we have a presentation. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just like guidelines and procedures on uh, how we could possibly take bids for any recreation program mm -hmm. that thinks that they can take over the, the recreation, you know, but I... Um, what if we, what if to, I mean, I like what you're, I like where you're yeah. going with this. And I like the idea of being able to, they have to present something I do. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a great op opportunity for us to be like, eh, are you really going to do what's in the best interest yeah. of our community yeah. and our students? Mm -hmm. But what if instead of having like deadlines, say it gets sent out mm -hmm. and we say, okay, this, if you want to apply and you want to do this, you have to put your application in. And then it comes to us as finance committee and we can look at it anytime it comes in because maybe yeah. they'll, you know, somebody is interested, maybe somebody's not interested, but maybe it's in six months, all of a sudden they're like, hey, now I'm interested because maybe MRAC is yeah. not quite ready, but maybe they are. I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Well, I would say like we don't want to do like six months from now. We've got to get our, we, we would want at least three bids possibly, but. Um, I would say, you know, even if we want to push it back a month or two months, you know, would be the deadline because otherwise we're going to be like, oh, I want this. I want this. I want this. You know, and it's like, well, we had it. We had a set time. We had a deadline that needed to be met. And so, I mean, rather than like six months from now, but uh, I, I like your thoughts, too. But um, what if we do I mean, and I just like I just kind of put this here because. You know, this is only 10 days and I don't even know if anybody has um, this and we would also have to depend on um, Director uh, Wells to be able to get this information out to anybody who has inquired in the last two years. So what's the I guess, you know. What's the point of trying to outsource it, I guess, right? Because we keep, you know, we've, we've had all the presentations on um, from the recreation program on why this isn't going to work or why this that's not going to work or but, you know, truly we have not heard from MRAC. We haven't heard from any of the other organizations, so we don't really know what their plan is. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so it would be good if we actually know can you set a budget? Can you work within your budget? How can, how is, what programs are you willing to pick up? Mm -hmm. You know, how much of this program are you, and then we have an actual, you know, in paper writing on what they're actually willing to do versus yeah. taking somebody else's opinion when we haven't even spoken to, mm -hmm. I haven't spoken to any of the people um, from MRAC 
you know, other than, you know, quick conversations after city council meetings or whatever, but I, I don't know what they, what they can bring forward. Right. Yeah, sure. I don't know what their plan is. Uh, Sherry. I have a friendly two cents. Um, I think I if this is something, <laughs> maybe inflation makes it three cents, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. If, if this is something that you guys are thinking you're wanting to move forward with, you know, that's your decision and that's not what I'm, I'm going to talk about, but I don't think it would be fair or appropriate for David if he has to submit one of these to be the person then to send these out to all the other entities too. I mean, if I'm fighting for my organization and I'm fighting, you know, to keep utility billing in house, I'm not going to want to tell all the other entities, Hey, <laughs> guess what? You can come try to get our right. jobs. And by the way, I'm presenting too. I don't think that's fair. I think that's really in bad taste. So I think you need to decide if you just want to have these other entities be able to present something for you guys to consider um, that is maybe, you know, uh, what they call the 3P, the private public partnerships, um, or you do it that way and you put it out in a paper or wherever our, our current legal process gets put out and, and then you, you get what you get. Mm -hmm. That's my two cents, three cents. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah. So, I mean, like I said, this is, you know, just kind of like ideas and um, just trying to hear from everybody because um, I, I like to have conversations with everybody and know what what they can bring to the table. So um, it was just kind of thoughts. And it can it's on a, a word document, so it can be changed and edited <laughs> by anybody. So I'm just, I'm just trying to figure out, you know, or if you know, and it doesn't have to happen either. It was just like this is just like I was thinking, you know, what are our procedures mm -hmm. and our processes if we were to take a bid, um, or you know, do we want to do private public partnership, or do we want to just kind of keep it all in house? I mean, I understand like our parks and rec department needs to be profitable. They need to, you know, we can't keep taking everything away, but, you know, at the same time, what does MRAC actually have for us? What are, what are their ideas? Cause I don't know. I got sure. a piece yeah. of paper that yeah. said, oh, we're going to cancel this. We're going to cancel that, but this isn't going to happen. This isn't going to happen, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I can't imagine them saying that, you know, we're going to take over the parks and rec department. And we're not getting rid of anything. And then yet half of the organization's gone. So I just I kind of want to know what really their plans are. I know in my discussions with MRIC, like when we all met down at um, my shop was that they only want the sports side. They want nothing to do with the social side. So any of the other classes and things like that, and they won't take anything. They can't touch anything that's uh, for the school district side, like the like the cheer classes, and they can't touch any of that kind of stuff. So they would only take like our pee wee soccer and our basketball and baseball or something yeah. like that. Uh, they said the There's field the tiniest sport. amount of what we do is the field sports, and that's all they want. And that, from my understanding correct me if I'm wrong, David, is that's where we actually bring in a little bit of profit. I don't think we make much on anything else other than the school. Yeah. So unfortunately, I feel like that meeting probably should have taken place at a CD or at a, a finance meeting um, because I this is the first I've heard of any of this, right? So I don't have a lot of that information that's kind of like inside information that you have that I don't. So that's why I'm saying like a procedure for finance committee, um, you know, and then allow for presentations, you know, would be great. Mm -hmm. um, so that we're all aware and then we can decide from there if we're going to take this to full council, if we're going to just drop it and not put it anywhere or if we're going to, um, you know, vote on it. But um, so that's why I'm just kind of setting up procedures for um, how things how I feel like things should go through the finance committee or through the CDC if we're having presentations from um, other people. So do we open up for presentations? We just had a presentation from the senior center. So do we allow for that to happen with MRAC when they're literally talking about, you know, you know, I don't know what what 
their plans are. So I'm just saying like, this is just a, a and but like I said, this $200,000 budget that can be changed down to 150. It can be changed down to 50,000, you know, whatever, making, if you know, profit, it's just like, uh, you know, if well, yeah, and this is supposed energy. to be over and above what their profits are, you know, or whatever well, they're bringing in is, yeah. you know, kind of how I worded it. But anyway, I mean, it, you know, and it doesn't have to happen, but I just, I just feel like this is a good thought process. And I feel like if we're going to be talking about opening up the recreation program to an organization, then we need to have policies and procedures set in place on how we're going to take bids, how we're going to run this program. And it needs to be um, transparent so that everybody who's on the finance committee should be aware of, of what's being discussed and, um, and what was said, because I don't, I don't know what was said in that meeting. So I'm getting, you know, what Council yeah, Deputy sure. Mayor heard and yeah. what Council Member heard, mm -hmm. and I didn't hear it personally from my own ears. But I think that it should also be part of um, everybody on finance and public records so that we can um, make a decision. Yeah, and the meeting was more just a let's get because Mayor was there. Uh, David Wells was there, Alex was there, and it was more just a, let's get everybody in the same room, mm -hmm. let's talk, figure out, does MRIC have, what are, what are they really wanting before, you know, and that was when uh, Mayor Carter gave David the opportunity to go and talk with the school district and start those, opening those doors where mm -hmm. his doors were closed before. So it gave them a chance to kind of communicate with MRIC, and MRIC hasn't said anything since then. I haven't heard anything from them. I mean, have you heard anything from them since? Uh, I think they're willing to reach in when contacted. They're kind of waiting for us, I think, honestly. Um, and I think, uh, I think I'm guessing they could come up with something if they want to have some kind of presentation or something. Um, if that's what you guys want to see. Um, then I'm going to talk to them about uh, trying to get together in regards to the read property. So something separate, but uh, those kind of they kind of go together though, because their kind of thoughts are that you know I'll park and then doing the rec program and stuff. So it would be good to have a conversation with them. I mean, I think conversations don't hurt, mm -hmm. and you'll probably get more of an idea of where they can or cannot go from that conversation. Council Member Fuller. Oh, yeah, yes. What if, um, would this satisfy um, kind of your thought process? I, I'm trying, I, th I think we're all probably kind of sitting here going, whoa, you know, we, we weren't considering any of this at this point. So we're all just kind of shocked. So you're not getting the best of us, if you will. Um, <laughs> in hearing your, your request, though, it sounds like you kind of wanted to hear, um, it sounds like there was a meeting that you weren't involved in, which I can appreciate. It sounds like it should be here. What if we just opened it up and had David maybe contact people not as a competitive thing, but as a, hey, we're considering partnering with uh, recreation and an outside private entity. If you're interested, can you come and have a conversation with, you know, the finance committee and let us know what you would provide and what you would need from us? Right. And just kind of start an informal process instead of a more formal process to see if that's something you're even interested in. Did someone spark a an interest that we need to do something more formal or let it die on the vine. Yeah. What's the problem we're trying to solve? What are we going to do with parks and rec with recreation program? Like, you know, now we have an ILA, right. but we still don't really have like, we don't have the vision. We don't have the mission. We don't really know where we're going with that. We now have a budget also, We do. but I don't want, but we had a budget last year. Right. We had a budget before that. Right. So it's like, how do we stay within that budget? How do we increase the the offerings of the the parks and rec department? You know, what is what is the increase? What how do we become more profitable? Doesn't have to be like, I mean, of course I'd love for parks and rec to actually make money and have money in savings, mm -hmm. but um so that they can utilize it during uh, you know dry years but current administration should be able to fill most of those requests for you right huh the, the current administration should be able to fill you know what, what are they where do they see the parks and rec going 
you know what, what but is, we also what, have we also have a private entity that mm -hmm. has that yeah. has in, in more than one occasion yeah. brought forward mm -hmm. that they were willing to you know sure. consider but that's part of the, the part of that program presentation they have heard from is from the administrations from how you know if you're uh, i'm here in the parks and rec program you believe is too small it needs to be larger um so you know how does how does the administration what is the proposal from the administration well then they're going to have well, they need to expand a little bit yeah but so, we but. when you say profitable though i hear you know i i don't know of any parks and rec program in any governmental entity that really makes money mm -hmm. you know it's extraordinarily hard uh, some of them are apparently yeah. close I think my my thought would be, I look at it as if we ask Parks and Rec to be profitable, we would have to ask Senior Center to be profitable. And we're sinking a lot of money into our Senior Center as well. And that would be impossible for them to come up with and make profit um, for us. And it's like we're looking out for our youth and we're looking out for our seniors. And those are our two most precious parts of our city. I mean, everybody's precious yeah. within our city, you know, but trying to kind of guide our students into hopefully better environments in their lifetime. Well, if we had a if we had a private entity that wanted to take over the senior center and, you know, well, you know, could, and make you improvements, you, you know, as well. That. I mean, you then I would still that. want a policy and procedure set in place to Yeah, but you don't you know, generally we don't right now, you know, just to kind of shorten the I'm sorry, okay. we got to run. Yeah. Really. This is a great conversation oh, okay. um, because, you know, there are a uh, 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 laundry list of services mm -hmm. that the city could go say, let's have private entity yeah. do that. You know, there, yeah. there are many, um, almost everything the city does almost mm -hmm. could be easily outsourced. And yeah. we could pursue that if we wanted to, but I don't know where the council. Well, would. I mean, I know that we that the the over here that we've had, we've had at, um, taking, I, yeah. I would just yeah. really quick because we do have to go. I would just say that uh, it doesn't hurt to uh, talk to find out what they could or could not do. And I'm saying that as somebody who bought in, it's like, hey, let's talk to these people, to figure out some way to sure. stop it. The ILA is for when you so. We got through this as far as like, hey, we budgeted now one hundred forty-eight thousand dollars. We have an ILA for one year, and that gets us through the year. So, David is working on coming up with something. We had a meeting with Councilmember Morrell, Paul Carrera, uh, to talk about the county and what they could possibly do. There are, you know, some things that we can do as administration to move our rec program forward. But I think it's also smart to listen to who else is in the room. Who else for visit maybe they can use to help us maybe they can't but let's i would think um we think it would be wise to have the conversation to be able to say yes or no and be done with it one way or another yeah That's um, my thought. yeah no i i agree i i think we um, I like where you're going, and I think if somebody does show interest, we have to have a policy. You're right. We have to have something in place that says, you know, this is our mission, our vision, all that kind of stuff. But I don't know if Challenging. we're, I think, I know that they've been working really hard between the mayor and David on trying to come up with something to help build the program. And I want to give that opportunity to them first because it's our program. And before we bring in an outside entity yet. Yeah pause on that because yet Good. but and then hopefully you know hopefully they can they can come up with i know i've you know they've been working hard and trying to figure all this out and meeting with morel and herrera and stuff and hopefully they can come up with a regional approach to it too or yeah maybe well and i you know and of course um director wells i you know i appreciate you a hundred percent and and everything that you're doing so i don't want to, i'm not trying to like degrade whatever's going on. I just wanted to be able to hear from um, MRAC and anybody else that may have been wanting to present. So that was basically just trying to set a, a policy and procedure if this ever happens again, where we have somebody who's saying, hey, we can we can run this thing. Well, then you need to show us how and why, right? So that was more kind of just setting a procedure uh, is where my thought process was. It wasn't to like take away from all of the work that you're already doing. So, and I do appreciate you. So, <laughs> we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>